Well, welcome back to the 1600. I'm actually at kind of a crossroad here. I went and looked at that four-speed transmission that I've got out of a 74 2002, uh, only to realize that it isn't, in fact, out of a 74 2002, because it has this right here. Uh, this hole is for the mechanical clutch linkage, so that's also out of an early car. Uh, I'm thinking of either trying to retrofit a slave cylinder in there to use with a hydraulic clutch, uh, which my new pedal box will require. Otherwise, I'm going to have to find either a hydraulic 4-speed or swap to a 5-speed. <sighs> the dilemma. Well, either way, pedal box is coming out. So, first steps are going to be taking all this linkage stuff off. This should be pretty easy. Looks like a 10 mil should just slide right off the end. This, two 13 mils, and it looks like an 11 hex. This looks like it's pressure fit. Goes straight up to that reservoir. I'll just leave that off to the side for now. And the throttle linkage is very, very hard to see, but there's a cotter pin on the other side of it. That should be easy enough, or sorry, the clutch linkage is a cotter pin. Should be easy enough to just take right out. So I would like to ditch the mechanical clutch on this car anyway. We'll see how this goes. Well, other than the uh, space constraints being very tight around the cylinder, everything else came off pretty well, including that little cotter pin. So I'm going to lower her down and see what I can undo from the inside and on that reservoir itself, too. <clears throat> other than the probable asbestos down here, everything she looks pretty good. This pedal box looks pretty fabulous. Looks like I'll have to undo something on that brake pedal linkage. Throttle linkage, we're good to go. Doesn't look too bad. All the bolts actually look in really good shape. Possibly not original, possibly original. But these cars are usually really rotten around here. And this one, honestly, pretty nice shape. So continually, very impressed by this thing. Even the gas pedal is usable. I bought a new one of those, but perhaps I won't use it. So I'm gonna disconnect that little brake linkage thing, try to maybe get that brake master cylinder off. And then after that, unbolt that pedal box and get it out of the car. Well, that wasn't too bad. And that brake master cylinder is actually perfectly healthy. I think the brake system on this car probably worked. Whoops. At any rate, I think I would rather have the late style 2002 anyway. Uh, there is my pedal box hole. I'm just gonna grab my wrench out of here and then we'll lift the car back up and take a look at it from the other side, but all is looking quite well so far. I mean, once again, color me impressed. That looks pretty darn good. Remember that this sheet metal is 50 years old, five zero. Looks like I messed up the Speedo cable a little bit. Oops. Oh well, I still, I'm kind of not sure what to do about the manual clutch. I could probably try to tap a couple of bolts into this and use, you know, a late style, I don't know if I have one here, but uh, like an M20 from an E30, you know, the uh, clutch slave cylinder, and then extend the push rod to just push on, <laughs> push on this. It looks like is a release. Yeah, I mean that is the release fork. Looks like it cantilevers off a pin on this side. So I might end up doing that again. I really want to ditch the mechanical clutch any way I can. And it looks like the uh, clutch master cylinder on that other pedal box is approximately the same size as that of an E30. So we may be in luck. We'll see. Ugh. Anyway, late model pedal box, looking pretty good. It's got some booger welds there, which is a little interesting. Maybe it's stripped out. Uh, that piece, I believe, is the same early to late, so I'm not worried about having to replace it potentially. But I'm very, very excited that it has the uh, new style everything, <laughs> especially the hookup for the up top brake booster. The 1600 is just too hard to find parts for. The 2002 you can still find parts for. So that's why I'm going to this. Um, honestly, this is in pretty good shape too. So got to give a shout out to Blunt Tech, uh, Steve Peterson. He does a lot of the uh, 2002 parts sales around the country. And uh, 
Again, he's a local guy here with Blunt Tech, and they hooked me up with this thing for a sweet friend price. So if you're looking for O2 parts yourself, make sure to check them out. Wow, you guys will be proud of me. I put drum brakes together. <gasps> I know. When I did that uh, E60 with the parking brake, I bought these little uh, drum brake pliers. Wow, these are fab. If you ever have to work on drum brakes, get a set of these. <laughs> but anyway, um, I didn't buy new drums yet. I will if I have to. Sorry for the camera angle for a second. But I figure if I can get away without it for now, and these really do, you know, I mean, they look okay. I think I'm just gonna run them until I can uh, find a better option um, for maybe a disc brake conversion that will still fit under a 13 inch wheel. Um, these will be just fine. I mean, this car only weighs like 1800 pounds, so. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go do the other side. Drum sitting right there. Pretty minimal tools, just the pliers, a standard screwdriver, and a uh, drum brake pliers, so. They're not complicated devices. They've been around for a long, long time, but we'll see if they work. Side two done. Time to reunite it with its drum. The first time in who knows how many years. Ooh, this one doesn't quite clear. With the parking brake cable stuck on this side. Shoot, nope, it fit on. I think there was just a little bit of livelihood left in the, uh, the wheel cylinder in there. Bleeder. Where is the bleeder? Oh, broken clean off. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, well, I need at least one new wheel cylinder. Let's see if this one is also snapped. I do have one new one. Lovely. That one is snapped as well. What I might try. Shoot, if I can't find a second one. You can usually crack the hard line and evacuate the air from the actual port well enough to get them to work. Yeah, it's a little sketchy though. Not really what I'm after. Shoot, well that's the first real snag. But it looks like a real car again back here with some drums on it. Discs I will get around to. Um, I've never actually dealt with a two-piece rotor like this. I'm guessing I'm actually gonna have to take the entire bearing assembly off uh, to take the carrier off, get the rotor off, and then swap the rotor. I am gonna measure the disc and see if it's the same size as the 2002 disc. Uh, if it is, I'm probably just gonna swap the calipers for now. Alternatively, I could just run the 1600 calipers for a while. I don't think there's anything wrong with these other than the extremely used up pads. Yeah, now I've just got to kind of prep that new pedal box and uh, get that installed and figure out exactly what I'm going to do um, with the hydraulic clutch. I suppose before I do any of that, I am going to prep the sheet metal around that area and uh, treat it with some pour 15. I may as well do the whole area right now since I have access to it and since I just spilled some fresh brake fluid on it. I really don't want this car to rust apart since the investment was quite dear for what it is. <laughs> Anyhow, um, yeah, that's, I guess that's probably all I've got for today. I know it's kind of a short segment, but uh, still a whole bunch yet to do. <clears throat> I still have to take the old intake manifold off. I have to figure out if I need a new, this piece right here, uh, the water outlet head. On the 1600 and the 2002, it's a little different than the uh, E30 injection piece uh, that goes straight out to the heater water valve. Um, this is going to be a lot of a lot of googling, a lot of trialing, a lot of error. So that's probably again all I'm going to do for right now. But uh, the car is finally on the radar. It's finally getting work done, and I'm getting more and more excited seeing as it's only about two and a half months until we get nice warm weather starting here in Minnesota. Thanks as always for watching and following along.